Hey everybody, I'm going to do a quick CPU run on Cinebench R23. This is my SP104 13900KS. Uh, now my bio says it's SP96 for some reason. I don't know why it's been saying that. Um, but nonetheless, it's an SP104. So, I went ahead and did a R23 run. And we got 45, 358. This number's heavily operating system determined right because someone may score 46,000 and that's like one percent faster so um heavily os dependent depending on what you have running in the background um, but we'll we'll take a look at the temps here you can see the max cpu temps here for the cores are about 56 to 63 and the e-cores as well and the cpu package is 63. Uh, it looks like the max power draw is about 379. I've got the P cores at 6.1, the E cores at 4.8, and a 5 gigahertz ring. This chip's ring is not very good, so I do have to kind of be reasonable with that. I've seen 13900Ks that can do 5.3. Um, some guys have KSs that can do 5.5 on ambient. So, um, but this is the setup here. It is on chilled water. And this is my water tank. I've got it insulated by a blanket for now until my foam insulation shows up. And I'll make sure it's sealed up nicely. And there's my chiller. So we're going to go ahead and run this again. see those core temps are actually really good those are great temps amazing especially for 6.1 gigahertz on an sp104 um, this is that's a performing chip this thing will probably rival 14900k's <laughs> um, here we go you can see those that power is about 380 watts which is not bad that is not bad at all i mean that's um that's really good so i'm gonna go to the bios and we're gonna take a look your mileage may vary on what you can run with this so um keep that in mind it's gonna be heavily dependent on cooling All right, okay, here we go. We're in the BIOS. That's my SP96. <laughs> I don't know why it says that. Uh, BIOS 1203. And let me, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the, here we go. Here's the CPU speeds. All right, first things first, I run XMP, remove all limits. DDR5-8000, this is a profile that is stable through anything, absolutely anything. And uh, the P cores are 6.1, sync all cores, E cores, sync all cores, 4.8. Uh, as far as the DRAM timings, I run these. Case latency 34. It's a very good baseline profile to build on top of. That's for sure. If I reset my BIOS, I load this. All right. Let me uh, go back here. So, uh, first things you're going to want to... Let me adjust my hand here. Um, you're mainly going to want to do is just set your P cores to 6.1, E cores 4.8. Uh, I'm running a load line at level six, and my ring is just 50. I run an adaptive voltage, and then I put a negative offset here, 
with a voltage offset of 15. All right. And then of course for my IMC, I run 1.425. I haven't tried to reduce these yet, um, but I am planning on um, doing that, of course. And uh, I do enable C states because you want your voltage to be able to idle down while, you know, if you change your Windows power plant, because you're running adaptive voltage, so you want to make sure it's working properly. So make sure you go over to um, CPU power management. You're going to enable uh, C states and disable enhanced C states. Enhanced C states is going to make it where those CPU cores are, they'll bounce off 800 megahertz. And it'll happen even if you're playing a game. You can go look at your MSI Afterburner, you'll see your cores are just like hitting 800 back and forth, back and forth. And you don't really notice it on this CPU because it's so fast anyways, even bulm stock. Um, but I remember on a 11900K, which is way slower than something like this, you could feel those skips in a game. You would feel those spikes and latency spikes because the CPU cores are like hitting that 800 megahertz, boom, 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 boom. They're just trying so hard to find any moment to idle themselves, even if it's while you're playing a game. <laughs> And it makes no sense to have enhanced C states on. It's the stupidest thing. I get it if you're on, if you're browsing the web, you know. But if I'm gonna overclock my CPU and I want to change my power mode to balanced, hey, and I'm browsing Windows, that's fine. It helps the voltages clock down and stuff. And but typically, I don't run that. Um, the Windows that I run, I'm gonna go ahead and exit my uh, BIOS here. I'm gonna load back into Windows real quick. Uh, typically. I run a uh, specific power mode and it disables core parking and it makes it just, it's awesome. You know, you can pretty much jump into a video game and you'll see that core usage and it, um, I mean, it uses them very, very well. It's like hitting usage on every single one and it, it's awesome. It's quite nice. This Windows is getting a little old, <laughs> so seeing a lot of blue screens. You yeah, have seen a lot of blue screens. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and let me see. Here we go. Choose power plan. So I run this one here. It is the Dynamic Boost Disable CPU Core Parking, which is nice. It is awesome. When you're in a game, you see those E cores, P cores, all of them utilized 100%. So. It is a very nice thing to have. I'm going to go ahead and uh, run Starfield real quick. So you see those those uh, cores they get used very well. They get utilized extremely well. And I'll jump in the game here real quick. I love a PC for how quickly it gets you into a game, right? You're like, bam, instant. It's awesome. So you can see that core usage. 4.8 E cores, CPU is using about 130 watts, looks like, and 6.1 on the P cores. Uh, this BIOS from a 3090 Kingpin is actually the regular 520 watt BIOS. I kind of reverted back to that, primarily because of just wasted power usage. Um, if I use the 1000 watt BIOS, I can get away with about 2295 on my boost. I use the Kingpin tool to add a little bit more voltage, but it's not really worth it. It's another 110 watts or so of consumption, and it's just the trade-off is like just not really worth it. Um, but anyways, this is my 6.1 gigahertz on the P cores, 4.8 gigahertz on the E cores. And uh, this is a great profile to try and start with. 
um, and it works amazing. I mean, it works really, really good. It's going to be stable for the most part. Um, especially game in, even running like, you know, Cinebench R23, anything heavy is going to work fine, but you're going to need some cold water, lots of water flow. And, uh, anyways, I'm going to go ahead and exit Starfield and we're going to pull up hardware info real quick. I just want to see another thing that I love is being able to set that, um, which I believe it'll work correctly. Yep. So you set your power plan to to balanced and it just it clocks down all your cores and it's it's awesome. It's gonna reduce that idle voltage. Bring in and you know the power consumption is just so reasonable. It's like 30 watts right now. It's you know, that's absolutely realistic. You know, dynamic boost, bam, maxes them out. And uh, this is a pretty extreme profile, <laughs> but I just wanted to share my bios and share what I'm running right now. Um, but if I'm not running something like this, I'll run my CPU bone stock on LLC one, which is a really low power, really easy going. I mean, the 39 KS is a beast right out of the box, especially with a good memory profile like this. Uh, that thing is just gonna hammer games, right? Especially, you know, most of these games nowadays are pretty GPU dependent with my 3090 Kingpin. But anyways, see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.